Current global municipal solid waste generation levels are nearly 1.3 billion tons per year and are expected to double by 2025, showing that solid waste management has emerged as one of the greatest challenges of future in the world. One of the best solutions is the concept of waste to wealth. It transforms waste from an exhausted utility to valuable commodity in terms of energy or products. In 2016, Malaysians generate trash at an astonishing rate of 1.1 kilograms per day per person, causing 13.943 million tons of solid waste per year. Generally, the common solid waste is made up of food waste, paper, plastics, metal, glass, and others. Out of the total solid waste stream, 13% is plastic waste, which is about 1.813 million tons per year. Currently in Malaysia, there are several ways of solid waste management which are landfills, incineration, and recycling. However, none of them is the perfect solution for plastic waste. Landfill is a place to dispose of refuse and other waste material by burying it and covering it over with soil. However, disposal of plastics in landfills is ultimately unsustainable. This is because plastic takes up to 1,000 years to break down which is a very much longer time compared to other waste. Next, incineration is a waste treatment process that involves the combustion of organic substances contained in waste materials. The incineration results in the release of carbon dioxide and other air pollutants including carcinogenic polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and dioxins, increasing the greenhouse gas emission. On the other hand, recycling plastic possesses major logistical difficulty. This causes the cost of recycling plastics to be very high compared to new plastic production, resulting in low recycling rate of 10.5%. Therefore, plastics to fuel technology, which is also known as PTF technology, is a better alternative way of plastic waste management. In PTF technology, the non-recyclable plastics are collected and inserted into the reactor. It is then heated without oxygen at low temperature of 400 degrees Celsius and low pressure, which is known as pyrolysis reaction. The long-chain hydrocarbons are broken down into short-chain hydrocarbon, producing liquid fuel. The vapor products of pyrolysis are then condensed into oil, fuels, and petroleum products. Whereas the non-condensed air is flared to the atmosphere and the char is collected from the reactor after completion of pyrolysis cycle. As the result of pyrolysis, up to 60% of the output is mixed fuel, which can be used in industrial boilers, generators, or further refined into diesel and gasoline. 17-32% to 32 is solid residue, where it can be used as a heating source. And lastly, 15-18% to 18 is combustible gas, which will be recycled back to the furnace as heat. In brief, PTF technology can transform plastics into crude oil, transportation fuels, lubricants, fuel oils, and electricity. The best part of it is pyrolysis is self-sustainable. This means energy is required only for startup operations. With PTF technology, 14% of greenhouse gas emissions, 58% of water consumption, and 96% of energy consumption can be reduced. At the same time, no wastewater effluent will be produced from the gas cleaning system. Malaysia spends around 2 billion per year for landfill and 17 million for 7 million incinerators. However, by spending 17 million for the pyrolysis plant, 1 tons of mixed scrap plastic can produce up to 264 gallons of consumer-ready fuel with almost similar calorific value with other fossil fuels. In terms of energy, this could eventually power up to 9 million cars per year, reducing the dependency on the non-renewable resources. In terms of profit, if all plastic waste is converted into consumer-ready fuel, the annual profit is expected to be 3.624 billion. In conclusion, the concept of waste to wealth is crucial as there are many possibilities for waste. By improving the waste management, we could create stronger environmental stewardship with community in the future.